see the so bulkification of triggers uh, we have already seen so testing test classes test cross best practices okay this is very much important series these are the best practices of test classes okay check this some logic right cross as many lines of code as possible okay means at least 74 percent of uh, x code is required okay every trigger must have some test coverage means at least one person should have all classes and trigger must compile successfully so when deploying apex to production organization each unit testing organization uh, should be passed okay callouts are not counted as part of apex code this is just a method okay. if code uses conditional logic execute each branch then see this use system asset methods to prove that code behaves properly Okay. Always handle all exceptions that are cut instead of merely catching the exceptions. And use run as method to test your application in different user context. Exercise bulk trigger functionality. At least 20 records in your test. This is very much important. And use order by keywords to ensure that records are returned in the expected order. Not assume the record ID in a sequential order. It's not. Okay. So use test setup wherever it is possible. Instead of using CR data, CR data too should not be used. Instead of that, you should use test setup. Okay. And then if you want to test some asynchronous effects or if you want to test different um, transactions then use test dot start test and test dot stop test okay write comments try to write comments on the test methods then whenever uh, someone is reviewing your code or visiting your code they can understand easily okay single test okay so there is something parallel test execution that explains this it is one more thing is that e is parallel equals to true there is one more notation is test is parallel equals to true okay that means all test methods will be executed in your single side okay usually the test methods will be executed one by one but if you use is test and is parallel equals to true at the class level then all test methods will be executed in the same time okay so let's go ahead and try something of this what is that okay what is run as let me explain that okay so you have to let's say you have two profiles one is system administrator profile and uh, some sales profile and other profiles are there you want to run this logic should work for a specific profile or let's say specific user okay then what you can do is you have to create a user with that specific profile and you can run the code like like let me training trigger test so we have not written it okay so this logic whatever the logic we are testing here 
when the ghost name is changed, when the record is getting updated, it is throwing the error. If you want to test this logic with a specific profile user, then what you can do is have to create a user. Okay, just go ahead and create and user and test trust. So you have just nothing but you have to create user record. That's it. Okay. What is mandatory? First name, last name, user, user user. Okay. First name. First best. Second name. Correct. Last name. Still test user and email equals to test user and create of test user is that usually Might be test user will be already exist. Username, right? Username. So username should be always unique, right? So for that, what we used to do is test user. Okay. Then system dot s rate of means it will be giving the unique email address sorry unique username so it won't fail to create the record then one more thing is you have to give the profile right so let's I have a profile called custom profile right let me create with this profile user what I'm going to do is select from profile page say your name equals to okay limit one Okay, then here you have to give the profile ID as well. Two, three dot. Okay, so on some other values are also required. Okay, see this first name, last name, profile ID, email. So these are the try to create this user. Insert. So once the record is created for one user, so whose profile is this custom profile, I need to verify if they have access to this code to update the training or not. Okay. So system dot run as okay. run as you can give like this run as you means user. So you are entering this. Okay. means run as means if you want to test the logic for specific profile users or one of the permanent set users you can use this logic test system dot run as test this See, this is failed it will be saying that set failed something okay Username must be in the form of email address. Okay. 
test to user It's going to be So this means so what is today's date? 25 11 2021 will be printed. If we give like a system that today, right? Then what it is, it will be having some hyphens or something. That's why it is throwing the error. Try this. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay. So missing alias name. And time zone saving. These are required. Alias key, help key, these are. Don't worry about that. You can just keep up your best. So you have P. So here, so that is that says. Now here we have and the thinkers list has compose one second. Okay, so what is what is the line number twenty three? Line number twenty three. This is see this. So the record is created here, but that record is not visible to this user because this custom profile, whatever the profile we have, is 
is throwing the error means you are trying to test with this user the permission is missed okay now go to the custom file and check whether the permission is there or not object permissions train there is read create edit delete permission okay there is a read permission create permission but this record is created by some other user right so what we can do is do one thing use this and system dot means this user with this user only we are creating the record so then let's try to get the user with this email id so Right, ID wrong user made email to okay. this one again. This here not required, this should be exist and okay. So this is not a complicated. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create user and with that user I'm trying to create the record here itself. Okay, and then I'm trying to test this records. Just this is just for run as that's it. There is now this is fine. Okay, this is how you have to use run as okay. And one more thing is, there is one thing called, let's say, if you think that there is a chance of exceeding the governor limits like uh, 150 DML operations, 101 SOP inquiry exception, if you think that there is a chance, then what you can do is, this entire transaction you can keep in test dot start. Start test, okay. Then test dot start test. There is no methods or something. We just keep like stop test. So what this test dot start test and test dot stop test will do? This will give additional set of governor limits for this transaction. Means. Till now, whatever you have used here, one SOQL query will be ignored. And when you say this start test, then additional transaction. So this will be treated as the another transaction. So that for this transaction, it will release the fresh set of governor limits like one, 100 SOQL queries will be allocated. 150 DML operations will be allocated for this transaction. Okay, so that's how this will be work. Mean start test and stop test. And one more important point about start test and stop test is first one to set the additional set of governor limits. Second one to set the asynchronous apex. Asynchronous apex means future methods, then queueable apex, and then schedule apex and batch apex as well. These are all called as asynchronous apex. Those asynchronous apex will be tested, should be tested as a test dot start test and test dot stop test. So why should we use start test and stop test for testing the asynchronous apex? Because asynchronous apex is a another transaction. That's why we have to use this one. Okay. I hope you guys understand this. If you want you can write down this is very much important to create a user in the test class and run as test class and start test stop test okay this is one thing 
and another thing is bulkification testing usually you will be creating one record at a time from user interface but what if you try to create or update all records at a time let's say how many training records we have series we have more than 30 records right 30 items are there so if you want to test for 30 records okay what you need to do is add test plus 7 create 30 records that is 200 records how to create 200 records just simply what we can do using for loop. so start prime underscore c Finally, train start. Adding these ones, I'm giving like test plus. Finally, once the for loop is done, trying to create train start. Sorry. Set up trains. Okay, now I'm creating 200 triggers. Then this trigger should not throw any error if you are in setting 200 triggers. So we have already done this. No need to worry about those things. Okay, now as see this, we are creating 200 triggers, but here it is trying to retrieve only one record right but as vocal query it is saying that all records we have we don't have any limit it will throw the error check this see this is failure and reason is list has more than one row for assignment to a subject because you are trying to retrieve all the records from the database but trying to assign to one record. If you keep list of trainings, that would be fine. So use this list of these are very best. Okay, t dot. Then keep like t dot zero. Okay. Date t dot zero. Means first record you are trying to update. Nothing other than that. Now try this. So it didn't throw any record, any error. This is one way of means you are retrieving all 200 records. First, first record you are trying to update. That's it. Okay. Else, another way is keep limit here. You need to test only one record. Keep limit one. Okay. Even though if S O K returns 200 records, it gets the first record and is into this. Any of one okay just execute okay so this will be success this is how you have to do the bulkification testing in the triggers hope you guys understand this one okay now so let's go ahead and create small testing like invocable you know that you can call the apex from the process reader or flows right let's create let's have one small requirement when the training is created okay when the training is created or updated 
what I need to do is remove this mask, right? So when training is updated, what I need to do is I just need to perform related child record updates. Means students have to be updated. Okay, students, I have to update. What I need to update is date of joining should be changed to plus one. Means if it is eleven sixteen. It should be 1170. For this, let's write one small flow and one process filter. I mean, one apex class. So I'm going to do with the apex class for testing. Okay. Date, let's say, date of joining students, date of joining update. This is the Apex class I'm giving, and then invocable method. Invocable method. This is the annotation you have to write, and this should be public, and it should be static, and it should be void as well. Okay. Again, just method name is adjust rate of join. This is I'm going to give. So here what we need to do, we have to get training IDs, right? Because training IDs. What we need to do is we need to get all the students related to the training records. And then for those training records, need to get all students and update the date of joining plus one. Right? Here give like label or description invocable method you have to read invocable method in salesforce what is that what is the syntax and what is the use you should understand these things okay see this just give one label. This label will be displayed inside the class. And I confuse whether it is a label or description. Okay. Just rate of join. Okay. So here I am trying to get all students list of student programs person students to Select and one more thing. If there is no student, it will be a problem. Stop. Student. Say this right as of your favorite. Select ID. Date of joining this. Um, students. Let's go see. Wait. Training. For C in training, okay, save it. This means, do you understand this? We have training IDs. We know that how to get using the parent record, just in condition and IDs, getting the students. Now you have to write the logic to adjust the dates. Student programs for C as T giving students. Okay. S T dot rate of join programs for C equals to S T dot date of join programs for C. Then you need to give add days of one. Okay. This is very much important okay or you can give plus one but it doesn't work okay so update students okay so if you pause the training at least then simply it will update the students this you can directly 
do in the flows also but this is for our testing purpose we have written flow add and do is flow create a flow usually i will be explaining through the process builder but in next coming days this process builder will be gone and all will be done in the flows only right so i'm getting this one So when triggered means when a record is created, all of this. Okay. Go ahead and do this. Reform. Object is training object. Right. Then when a record is updated, so we do not have any condition. Just done. Okay. Give auto layout, the locations will be changed. This it will come. Okay, so here add an action. Type Apex. Just data domain. Okay, adjust students data join. Okay, then you have to give the values. This is the record ID, training record, then IDs. Already. So, here, so you need to pass the IDs of the train. So, we are using this one record.id. Just calling the this apex method just you, if you select the apex action whatever the label you have given in the invoke method that will be displayed here and you can call this method okay simple this is completed save it have to give just rate of join of students save it Activate it. Okay. Go to any one of the student record. The student. Okay. Let's select its training here. Student 3 double 4 10 2021. Right. So go ahead and this one. Just update this. Don't need to set any values, but simply just update. Edit. Save. We have not given any criteria. See this? What is this? We can't save this record because the adjust date of children and students process failed. What is the exception? First exception row zero for the ID. Training has max number of students. Means training record is having the uh, some validation on this one. Right? Okay. So the third go ahead and check the student record. Student trigger. This is the error message we have written else keep like 500 okay this is greater than 500 then it will throw the error okay now selected save it saved okay to the student record. What is it? 10 19 should be 10 20. Okay, 10 20. Now let's write the test class for this one. Okay. We have written 
the invocable method. For that invocable method, you need to create the test class. Simple to name the test. Okay. First, what you need to do, you need to create one student, right? So if you want to write the, if you want to create the student, first training should be created. Very much. Okay, let's go and create one training. Let's suppose here, give is test. Okay, then test static. Okay, adjust to 